Yeah. <laughs> Holy crap, guys. Do I even know how to talk to a camera anymore? That's the question. <laughs> Holy crap, so many things have happened over the past weeks and I will fill you in on that in just a little bit. You know what? Let's actually fill you in right now and wind back a couple weeks ago when all of the big things happened in my life. <laughs> my roommate again i thought let's record a week in the life yeah. of because then i still have this girl with me in the video she is moving out in like less than two weeks yeah in less than two weeks she's gonna leave me i'm judging you <laughs> <laughs> the only good thing about her leaving is that this is her room as i think some of you guys know i often say that in my videos because as you guys can tell the lighting is like yeah. amazing here she has a beautiful room so it's gonna be officially my room <laughs> after she leaves. We're gonna go out to the city center. Yeah. We're gonna do some shopping. Okay, let's have an eight seconds. Fit check, where Open are you? Overdressed and <laughs> casual. <laughs> <laughs> Woo -hoo. We're literally gonna get um, two chairs at like an Ikea-ish store and this is what I decide to wear. I am wearing sneakers though, so that makes it a bit more casual, I guess. But You never know who you're gonna meet. Yeah. We had a mental breakdown. <laughs> or with we, I mean, Yannicka had a mental yeah. breakdown. But look, the whole <laughs> back of the car is filled again, and that was maybe not what we meant to do, but we did. We did. The last evening together. It feels a bit like a breakup. No. Don't, don't you think so? No. A little bit. I will come back and I have no uh, hard feelings or no. Oh, okay, okay, luckily, luckily. <laughs> Tomorrow she's leaving. I'm gonna have to pack my bags here too in my room. Yeah. Which is kind of crazy. We'll never be in this room again <laughs> like this because then someone else would be living here. <sighs> oh, she's gone. She's not gone. <laughs> She's not gonna live here anymore. Oh. Oh god guys, I'm so emotional and that's good because I haven't been able to feel my feelings in a long time and it's so strange. Like Yannicka has been in my life for the past like two and a half years and she has been my best friend and like we've been through so much together. We've been through each other's breakups. We've supported each other always. We've done so many fun things together and then to just like stand here in well, now my room, but you know, and I have to put some furniture together and make it all cozy and nice and that's gonna happen and it's gonna be fine, but it's just real strange. I am, despite the sadness, very excited to make this a beautiful room. Like, holy crap. I have a freaking lodge situation or loft situation, I should say. To be able to make this my own, it's gonna be amazing. Yeah. First night in my new room, slept like absolute shit. <laughs> I feel like shit, my whole body feels like I have been run over by a truck, but I do already feel like it's it's feeling a little bit more like my space right now. The only thing is I have to put up bookshelves at some point and I know that this wall is like a to get through, but I wanna do like a little corner book nook thing here as well. My Kim, Kim helped me a lot, so that's very, very nice. And I look like a ghost. Same. Uh, we did go out for drinks yesterday. Many and drinks. And we both puked. We had seven cocktails. In two hours. But it was worth it. <laughs>
Wat is dit? Dit is echt niet satisfying. What a vibe. Cheers. Oh my god. I haven't given you guys an update in days. But I look cute now, so I thought it's the time to shine, okay? It has been intense these past couple of days. But now that I have my own little cozy space, it does feel like my place and I'm having like, it's so cozy. Yesterday evening, I actually moved all of my books from downstairs up to here. And now I have like a temporary bookshelf, but to be honest, I think it looks really freaking cute. I'm so happy. It's just, the only thing is, is that I am so sad that Janneke is not here whenever I get home from work or Whenever I'm just by myself, like that is definitely like a lesson that I will have to learn or that I'm gonna learn over the next couple of weeks, months to come, hopefully. Okay, I got my new carpet. This one should be bigger. <laughs> so I'm gonna unpack it and put it on my floor. It's gonna be checkered, which I like, uh, three, two, one. Ooh, look at that. <gasps> oh, I like this a lot. Holy crap, so many things have happened over the past weeks and I will fill you in on that in just a little bit. But I finished my first book of the year. <laughs> it is March 5th right now. I am so like annoyed with myself with how little and how slow I have been reading this year. Well, officially this is my second book that I finished this year because the first one that I finished like literally on the second day of January is Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez, which, oh my God, I'm a huge Abby Jimenez fan right now and I cannot wait for her new book, which is gonna release in like one or two months. But this is Just Kids by Patti Smith. And I started reading this book because Brit from Basically Brit, who is one of my friends here on YouTube and in real life, <laughs> it is one of her favorite books and she always talks about it and raves about it. And I really quite enjoyed it. The thing is, I didn't know who Patti Smith was. Um, sorry, not sorry, I'm not an American <laughs> and I'm not very much into the rock and roll scene. So that's why I don't really know Know her name but I read a memoir from someone who I don't even know recognize admire and I still really enjoyed it so Patti Smith talks about her love life friendship with Robert Maplethorne who was a really well-known artist in New York as well and she talks about how they kind of like grew up together coming to the New York art scene and getting more into poetry and painting, drawing, and making music, and meeting all of these famous people in the 1960s and 70s in NYC. The thing is, I don't know so much about pop culture from that time period, and so many names were dropped, and just a lot of talk about things that I don't know or don't recognize, so I had to often like look up who these people were and what these kinds of like flows in the art scene meant or looked like, and um, that sometimes did take me out of the story a little bit. I can really imagine that if you know all of these people and you're very much into the art world, this is gonna be like a four to five star read, but just because I'm a little oblivious. <laughs> this was like a 3.5 out of five star read for me, but I am so glad that I finished it. Not because I didn't enjoy it, but because I am really bad at reading multiple books at the same time. I prefer to just like read one book, finish it completely and then move on to the next one. But I couldn't start reading another fiction book whilst not having finished this one. And I'm so happy that now I can. I do have a couple of contenders. So let me show you which ones. <laughs> there are two books that I would like to pick up. So a couple of weeks ago I went to Amsterdam with Leonie not from the book Leo but Leonie from the Matcha Diaries she makes a podcast together with one of her best friends and she asked me whether I would like to meet up with her in Amsterdam just because she recently moved here to the Netherlands and she wants to make more friends and I always love meeting new people and making new connections I'm really low in the frame right now <laughs> don't fall you're gonna fall don't fall <laughs> and don't look at my messy chair okay but yeah I agreed to meeting up with her in Amsterdam we had an amazing coffee and Back to Black, which was an amazing coffee store. Their carrot cake, holy crap. That's unrelated though, but we went book shopping together as well. And she said, let's buy a book for each other. So I 
bought her a darker shade of magic by v schwab because it's one of my faves and she devoured it absolutely loved it and when she saw this book in the bookstore she was like oh, okay i know what to get you i'm gonna buy my brilliant friend by elena ferrante for you this is book one in a quartet and i literally know nothing about this book i have never heard anyone talk about it even though it's really quite famous and well known especially because i believe what she told me is that no one knows who elena ferrante is it's like a pen name, I guess, for the author. So it is a ravishing, generous-hearted novel. It tells the story of Elena and Lila, born in a poor but vibrant neighborhood in Naples. Ferrante has created both an unforgettable portrait of two young women seeking to carve out a destiny for themselves and the story of a city and a country undergoing momentous change. Because I believe that this takes place in the 1950s in Naples, right after the war, and you follow these two friends, one who is extremely pretty um, and has a lot of resources, and the other friend who is not super pretty but who is actually a genius but doesn't have the means to I don't know get like higher education and and grow up in a super rich environment as the other so I believe it's about like their friendship their differences in class um in looks in how they grow up and I've heard amazing amazing things about it and after I got this actually so many people in my real life surroundings like my friends and roommate um they said, oh my gosh, my brilliant friend, that's such an amazing story. The series is great, which is so funny because before I bought it, I never heard anyone speak about it. Yeah, I'm really, really curious about this one, but I also bought, during that same Amsterdam trip, I bought The Invocations by Crystal Sutherland. I absolutely adored um, this previous book by Crystal Sutherland, House of Hollow. It really gave a lot of like horror, thriller, Stranger Things vibes. And I was like actually freaked out by it, which is an accomplishment in my opinion, if like a book can actually freak you out. And this is her newest release. I honestly have zero clues what it's about. I just knew it's another horror thriller book by Crystal Sutherland. I gotta, I gotta grab it. It has got to go in my cart, you know? So again, let's read the back. Emma Bryan is haunted, hunted, and increasingly terrified as her clients, all desperate women, willing to sell a piece of their soul for a scrap of magical power, are being killed off one by one. Already, you got me intrigued, but we have more of the synopsis. Jude Wolf is rich as sin and as handsome as the devil, but she's also cursed. Her immortal soul is tethered to a demon and her body is decaying. She needs a solution fast. Zara Jones's sister has been murdered, but Zara has no time to grieve. She is set on revenge and on bringing her sister back from the dead. The clock is ticking. So many intriguing plot points already. <laughs> so as Jude and Zara's darkly terrible paths drive them ever further into the occult, they arrive at the same grim location, the apartment of a murdered woman. And there they find a strange business card inscribed with the words, Emma Brine curse writer. Emma, Jude, and Zara's lives are now unavoidably entwined. The three damaged young women, one cursed, one hunted, one out for revenge, must track down and eliminate a brutal supernatural killer before they too become victims. Everything about the synopsis intrigues me, and I know that House of Hollow was a book that I just like flew through, so I guess and hoping that the invocations would be the same for me. Plus it has great ratings already on Goodreads, but not a lot of people have actually picked it up. So I don't know which one to choose. I will keep you updated. I will read the first chapters of both of these and see which one grasps my attention the most. And that'll be my next read. But first I have to read the feedback that I received on my research proposal because that has been keeping me busy this past weekend, these past weeks as well, because I am now writing my thesis for my Bachelor of Psychology, which is fun, um, but takes up a lot of my energy. <laughs> it is finally time. I have been in this room for three months and I still have not made up my bookshelves. So let's change that. My plan for this bookshelf is that this is gonna be my priority TBR, or these are books that I expect to be a five out of five star prediction for me. So I'm gonna have a look at all the books that I have lying around upstairs and like a couple of them who are like on my shelves there already and move them to that shelf. Mm -hmm. So I think 
<laughs> I got all the books that I want to have on this prioritized TBR shelf. I don't know whether they'll fit, but what I'm first gonna do is organize them by genre. Contemporary fiction, murder mystery, horror, fantasy, something like that. And I will then see what it's gonna look like. Okay, so this bookshelf is sorted. It is semi-organized, but not really two at the same time. So on the top shelf, I put my fantasy books that I really, really, really want to get to, especially Hellbent is something that I've been meaning to continue on ever since I read Ninth House. I think back in September or October. Then I have the pile in the middle, all the dark books, which are fantasy, but also a little bit of a transition to horror murder mystery novels. And that continues on with a bit of like my fantasy sci-fi books all the way into the left corner. And then on the bottom shelf, I have my favorite shelf, which is contemporary fiction and romance. So on the right, I have a couple of like two books, nonfiction about love, about life in general. And then I have a ton of fiction, but mostly romance books that I really desperately want to read. Like the new Abby Jimenez book, like, ugh. I'm so excited for that. Also my currently reading, which is My Brilliant Friend. But by the way, I think the next book that I'm gonna pick up is Funny Story by Emily Henry because this is her latest release and I haven't been this excited for a new book in months. So I'm really, really excited to pick this one up and I've heard nothing but great things about it. That's besides the point. I also put a lot of like contemporary fiction books with either like delirious girls in them or very impactful life stories such as My Dark Vanessa. Yeah, I still have a ton of books upstairs and I think that on my white shelf that I took some books out of, I'm gonna put my either red books, books that are like my favorites, or just do some something random, something general. I just need this to be sorted out, I guess. <laughs> I am so relieved, excited, happy that I have finally reorganized my shelves. I just wanted to say thank you so much for being so patient with me, for not having been here for the past three months. My mental restraints, my own mental boundaries are keeping me from posting consistently. And they're keeping me from just like posting things that are not extremely extravagant. I mean, that's not what needs to be happening. I need to have fun with uploading. So I'm gonna soon incorporate some of my crochet hobby in my videos as well, just because I've been loving it. Shh. <laughs> if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for being here and spending time with me. And hopefully I will see you guys within the next three months instead of taking longer. Okay. <laughs> Bye.